Hey everyone, good morning, it's Michaela. I'm actually inside of Kansai International Airport, not Fukuoka today, um, and I'm about to head over to Wakayama. I visited Wakayama last year for a ninja project and it was gorgeous, I really loved it, I wanted to see more. So today, I'm gonna head out back to Wakayama to Kudoyama town and check out Mount Koya and I'm really excited. With historical roots in the Sengoku period, we're starting out our journey in Kudoyama town at the base of the spiritual Mount Koya, or Koya-san in Japanese. Over the next three days, our journey will take us from the bottom of the mountain to an overnight stay at a real Buddhist temple. Get ready to take a deep dive with me into a very traditional side of Japan. So now we've arrived at Kudoyama Station, and as you can see, it's quite quiet. There's not much going on around here. It's very, very serene, very Inaka. Uh, they say that the population of Kudoyama Town is only about 4,000 people, so it's not very big. Still, I can't wait to see what they have going on around here. Whee! So, Kudoyama Town is very proud of its historic connection to the Sanada clan. You can see these Nokumon Sen symbols, the six circles, everywhere across town. For those of you who are interested in Japanese history, it is said that the Sanada clan was exiled to Kudoyama Town after fighting on the losing side of the Battle of Sekigahara, known as the greatest samurai battle of all time that ultimately pitted the East against the West. The Sanada clan later fought during the Siege of Osaka 15 years later where they were ultimately killed in battle. Their story and their history are deeply intertwined with the town's identity. After a quick lunch, I headed over to Kanazawa Juoken to take part in a class teaching how to make Japanese confectionery sweets. Alright, so I've put my hat on, I'm about to wash my hands, and I'm going to learn how to make Japanese sweets in this cute little factory. I'm very excited. Cooking experiences are some of my favorite things to do when traveling because they really open you up to different cultures in a really immersive way. Even living in Japan, I'm not so confident working with bean paste to make desserts. But these step-by-step -step instructions were so easy to follow, and I was really happy with the results. <laughs> They're both daffodils. <laughs> so we're at the end of the day, and we have arrived at our final destination. Final destination. And uh, we are here at Kuwaraku, which is famous for uh, Kakinoha sushi, which is basically oshizushi pressed inside a um, persimmon leaf. But that's not all. Uh, this sushi uh, restaurant is actually where we're staying tonight. They also have a minpaku Airbnb type room in the back where guests can stay overnight, which is pretty cool. In a small town like this, you have to be versatile in your trade, I guess. Anyway, we are already starting our lesson. We're gonna learn how to make kakinoha sushi. And uh, I'm just gonna hop in here and join. The rural Wakayama area is known for a bright orange fruit called a persimmon. There are trees everywhere. In Kakinoha sushi, the fish is first preserved in a very strong vinegar and then wrapped in the giant persimmon leaf and left overnight. This traditional method of preserving and wrapping the sushi allows it to stay good for up to three days, making it the perfect snack to take on a pilgrimage or a hike through the mountains. So the sushi that we made today, we're not going to eat today actually. We're going to take it with us on our hike through Mount Koya tomorrow and it's going to be like our little bento packed lunch and I'm so excited to try it then. Now it's super dark. It is nighttime. <laughs> Good morning! <sighs> you can see that mist forming in the air. Um, but it is 7.30 a.m. and we're just packing up our stuff and we're going to go hiking in Koyasan and I'm so excited and apparently there's some really amazing historic shrines up there that are super photogenic and that's like that's my shit so I'm really excited to get going and it's like I don't even mind that it's an early morning and I don't even mind that it's cold like I just want to get out there I'm so excited let's go today we embark on our pilgrimage to Koyasan starting at Jisoin temple at the base of the mountain in Kuroyama Originally, Koyasan was a Buddhist mountain strictly for men, and women were not allowed to make the pilgrimage to the top of the mountain, so they were given Jisoin to pray at instead. These days, this temple is known for its feminine energy and is a popular place locally to pray for women's health, safe childbirth, marriage, and so on.
after a brief stop to pray for our safety during the hike, we begin the two and a half hour, eight kilometer hike up the mountain. We are taking an easy modified route that only takes us about a third of the way up, but for hikers going the whole way, you can expect the 24 kilometer hike to take about six to seven hours. The winding path slowly brings you up the mountain, leaving Kudoyama town in the distance. Okay, so we have walked six and a half kilometers to reach the checkpoint where we are now, and it's time to finally try the Kakino Hop Sushi. This is a marinated saba fish on top. It's not raw, it's been marinated, so it doesn't go bad as quickly as regular um, raw fish sushi does. It has a very special sort of fragrant flavor to it. And I feel like it's really important to mention that you don't eat the leaf. You don't eat the leaf, you just eat the sushi. It's a good snack, it kind of like, wakes you up. Perfect, because we're about to continue trekking along this path <laughs> for a little bit longer. After a little detour, we walked another two kilometers and arrived at Niyutsuhime Shrine, a Shinto shrine that is said to be the guardian of the Buddhist Mount Koya. It's interesting to see how both religions exist in harmony on the mountain. While I was here, I decided to participate in a ceremonial cleansing, or an exorcism, of bad luck. This is something I've never done before, but after hearing that this year is supposed to be unlucky for me, I'm kind of glad I got it done. And then it was off to lunch. Thankfully, a short walk from the shrine is a cafe operating out of an old traditional Japanese house where you can enjoy a set lunch made with local ingredients and even try on some of the traditional kimono they have available, if you're feeling adventurous. Fast forward a bit, and after what feels like a long day, we finally arrived at Nengejoin Temple in the town of Mount Koya. All right, it has been a long day and I'm so tired. And we have finally arrived at Koyasan um, to the temple where we will be staying the night. So we've got all my luggage. <laughs> it's beautiful. So this is the place of our shukubo. A shukubo literally means sleeping with monks and refers to temples open to guests staying the night. Originally open to traveling pilgrims in need of a place to stay, Shikubo are now a popular tourist attraction for Japanese and foreigners alike, looking for a spiritually cleansing getaway from everyday life. In Mount Koya alone, there are over 50 locations where Shikubo is available. Now with typical Japanese ryokan type hotels, this is typically a lounge area during the day, and then once you go to eat your dinner, the staff will come in and they'll lay down the futons and set it up for bedtime. So that's why you don't see a bedroom in here right now. But these garden terrace like views are very, very nice, very relaxing. And here's my room where I'm staying. The heater's on. It's really, really nice in here. As you can see, I have my lounge area. I've got my bed. And then right beyond the bed space, I have my own lounge area for views of the garden. Once we settled into our rooms, we were invited to join in on several Buddhist ceremonies, including the Komodaki ceremony, where wood panels are burned in order to grant the wishes written upon them. After that, we had a 40-minute silent meditation before dinner. It's time. 
time to eat. I'm very excited. It's shojin jori, which is Buddhist uh, traditional food that doesn't contain any animal products. Very nice considering we did all that hiking today, so this should leave us with a calorie deficit. <laughs> we'll be shredded in the morning. At 5.55 a.m., the bell rang and guests were called to the meditation room to participate in the 6 a.m. religious ceremonies. This practice is supposed to help sharpen your mind for the day ahead, but if you're not sure what you should be doing, it helps to just go with the flow and copy the people around you. This is my first time coming to Koyasan and I've heard stories about people taking, uh, making the pilgrimage up to the uh, temples through the mountains. This is my first time ever doing it myself and coming here and it is truly a very spiritual and magical place. I feel like if you're looking to do something very cleansing and spiritual during your trip to Japan, this is something that I would throw on the list because it just, it's so serene. I even feel bad for talking right now. It's so serene today. So quiet, so calm, and peaceful. Like overwhelmingly peaceful up here. It's beautiful. I spent the day on a guided walk around Mount Koya, ending up at Okunoin, Japan's largest cemetery. Stretching two kilometers in distance, according to Shingon Buddhism, it's the home of many meditating spirits. The silence isn't that frightening, it's actually extremely calming. With so many different places to explore in Mount Koya, it's hard to truly grasp all of its history and cultural significance in just one visit. The more you learn, the more there is to learn. For those interested in going deeper, it might even be worth staying an extra day. Alright, so after spending a day wandering around Koyasan, I'm ready to take a cable car back down to Hashimoto Station, head back to Osaka, get to Kansai Airport, and go home. And we hiked halfway up, no, a third of the way up um, to Koyasan, and then drove the rest of the way. But you can also take a cable car, and so I'm looking forward to the cable car scenery on the way down. Okay, I personally think three days was a little ambitious. I would have liked to have spent more time in Koyasan. I hope I can go back someday. It's a little far from Fukuoka, but if you live in the Kansai area, this is a really cool trip to make and I would definitely recommend it. If you're interested in booking any of the experiences that you saw in this video, you can find them in the description box below along with a more detailed itinerary. Thank you guys for watching this video and coming along with me on this adventure. If you have climbed Mount Koya or have stayed overnight at a Buddhist temple, what are the tips that you would want to give to other travelers wanting to have the same experience? Leave a comment below and I'll talk to you soon. Bye!